A desire to discover a passage from the Americas to the riches of Asia began as early as 1492 with the discovery of the Americas by Christopher Columbus. Throughout the next 300 years, the passage, which had gained the name of the Northwest Passage, was narrowed down to the Arctic Circle. Throughout the early 1800s, the Northwest Passage would be slowly discovered, with John Barrow appointed as Second Secretary of the British Admiralty in 1804. Several expeditions would be led, including three expeditions led by John Franklin. John Franklin, born in Spilsby, England, on April 16, 1786, would be destined for greatness. Franklin joined the Royal Navy in 1800 at the age of 14, seeing action at the Battle of Copenhagen as well as the Battle of Trafalgar during the Napoleonic Wars. He would be wounded at the Battle of Bourne Lake in December 1814 during the War of 1812. Writing on his experience in the two wars, Franklin would secure command of the HMS Trent in an expedition to Spitsbergen in 1818. The next year, in 1819, he would be chosen to lead the Coppermine Expedition, whose goal would be to chart the north of Canada, then under the charter of the Hudson's Bay Company, eastwards from the mouth of the Coppermine River. The expedition would prove disastrous, as by the end of 1822, the expedition lost 11 out of the 20-man party, and survivors were forced to eat lichen as well as a leather on their boots, giving Franklin their affectionate nickname as the man who ate his boots. Though there were charges of cannibalism, this would never be proven. Despite these shortcomings, he would be hailed a hero upon his return, with his failure to meet his objective and losing more than half of his crew to starvation, being overlooked by his highly romanticized tale of survival. He would once again be chosen to lead his second Arctic expedition. His mission would be to map the area between the Coppermine River and the Mackenzie River and to the Baffin Bay. Unlike the Coppermine Expedition, the Mackenzie River Expedition would prove to be a, a success, mapping 1,000 square kilometers of coastline. With no further Arctic expeditions planned by the Admiralty, Franklin would be sent to a peacekeeping mission in the recently independent Greece in 1830. He then got appointed as Lieutenant Governor in Van Diemen's Land in 1837. But though he was popular with the local population, he was soon sacked and humiliated by the local politicians in 1844. Returning to Britain in low spirits, Franklin was pleased to discover that Barrow was planning a new expedition to the Northwest Passage. This expedition, which would be Franklin's third expedition to the Arctic, was planned to be the glorious one that would finally establish a Northwest Passage route, as only around 500 kilometers remained unexplored. The Admiralty initially offered the expedition to famed Antarctic explorer James Ross, who declined, possibly due to his recent marriage, or perhaps because of his friendship to Franklin. Whatever his reason for declining, the aging Franklin, who was 60 years of age, would accept without hesitation. The ships he would bring would be the HMS Erebus and the HMS Terror, both ships that Ross had taken in his Antarctic expedition in 1839 to 1843, which originally bomb ships were reinforced, able to withstand strong sea ice with relative ease. Upon Franklin's insistence, the ships were further outfitted with a steam engine from a locomotive allowing for speeds up to 4 knots 
a heating system that would ensure the crew would be warm at all times, and a distillation system to ensure fresh water. They were also outfitted with propellers that could be brought up to avoid damage on the thick ice sheets. The HMS Erebus would be given to James Fitt James and commanded by Franklin, while command of the HMS Terror would be given to Francis Corsier, with much of the crew being of English origin, though some Scottish and Irish were also hired by the Admiralty. Borrow, a naturally optimistic man, believed the passage would be open sea, though Franklin, who had experience in the region, knew this would not be the case and prepared to deal with heavy ice and potential trappings. Two years would be given for the expedition, with an extra year of provisions before any rescue expedition would be planned by the Admiralty. Food would not be a problem, as canned food solved the problem expeditions faced for hundreds of years, as the canning process kept food relatively fresh for years. The contract for the canned food, however, was given only a few months before the expedition, leading to a quick and sloppy job in sealing the cans with a toxic lead sealment. The expedition left Greenith, England on May 19, 1845, with a total crew of 129 men and officers to Greenland, where they would restock before escaping into the Lancaster Sound in late July. The last Europeans to ever see the crew alive would be the Europeans coming home after the whaling season with the last sighting occurring on July 26th. It was 1847, and Jane Franklin, better known as Lady Franklin, John Franklin's second wife, became increasingly worried about her husband, though the Admiralty, who she shared her concerns with, assured her that her husband still had another year of provisions and a search was not necessary. A year, however, went by without word or sightings of the expedition. Greatly worried the Admiralty, who quickly sent three expeditions to search for the now missing expedition. In March 1848, Henry Collette would be ordered to search the western entrance of the passage by the sea, while the second expedition, led by Sir John Ray, and Sir John Richardson would follow Franklin's second expedition in exploring the coast between the Mackenzie and Coppermine rivers. A third and final expedition would be led by Sir James Clark Ross, who would search for the eastern entrance of the passage near Lancaster Sound, the expedition's last known position. All expeditions failed to find anything, and Ross got trapped in ice. Only able to sail into the Baffin Bay and to Europe in 1849, the failure of the three expeditions would see an outcry from the British public, who demanded the government find the lost heroes. A £20,000 award was offered to anyone who offered assistance to the crew. A £10,000 award was awarded to anyone who could either aid in the rescue of the crew or provide information of their whereabouts. In addition, the Admiralty sent a total of eight ships to search for the missing expedition in 1850, including expeditions led by Richard Collison in the HMS Enterprise, and Robert Montclair in the HMS Investigator, who became trapped in ice, unable to escape. The offer of awards attracted those outside of Britain itself, with New York merchant Henry Grinnell along with the assistance of the U.S. Navy, financed an expedition under the command of Edwin Jesse de Haven, who, like the rest of the expeditions, came empty-handed. The Hudson Bay Company, too, whose charter the land fell under, launched overland expeditions led by John Ray and run by ship to Victoria Island, which all but ended in failure. The first sign of the expedition's fate came on August 23, 1850, when Irmis Ormani discovered the remains of the expedition's first camp on Beachy Island. Following their discovery, more ships converged on the area, 
with William Penny discovering the remains of a hunt, as well as some artifacts on Devon Island. Len, the unthinkable happened. The discovery of three graves. The graves belonged to John Hartnell and William Brain of the HMS Erebus, as well as John Torrington of the HMS Terror. Under this new promise and a new concern of the still-trapped expedition of Collison and McClear, the Admiralty sent its last and largest expedition under the command of Sir Edward Belcher in 1852. Upon his return to England, had managed to rescue McClear with Collison returning on his own. He had also managed to sink five ships. McClure, however, became convinced that he had discovered the Northwest Passage, for which he was awarded £10,000 by the Admiralty. By 1854, the Admiralty admitted defeat and announced that unless any information came forth, the crew would be assumed to be dead, giving the rest of their pay to their relatives. The Hudson Bay Company sent John Ray to chart the northern coast on March 31, 1854, a mission which was soon forgotten when he would come into contact with an Inuit man who told him of a party of white men who had perished due to starvation at the mouth of a large river westward. Upon his return to Repulse Bay, a popular whaling site, he would question more Inuit who through their stories he would determine the river westward was the mouth of Back's Great Fish River. To back their claims, the Inuit provided Ray with items that could only come from Franklin and his crew, including his Hanoverian order. Ray would receive £8,000 from the Admiralty, while his men shared the remaining £2,000. As the Crimean War occupied the attention of Britain, it was Lady Franklin who financed further expeditions to discover the fate of her late husband, who between 1850 and 1857 had already spent vast amounts of her own money outfitting five expeditions, the last of which would take place in 1857. She convinced Francis McClintock, who took his steam yacht, the Fox, to launch one last expedition to solve the fate of her husband. In the spring of 1859, he relaunched the expedition, leading an overland search party on King William Island, with the party splitting in two, with McClintock taking the southern part and William Hobson taking the northern part. In April, McClintock met with two Inuit families, who provided him with several objects, clearly from the expedition. He would later purchase silver plates from them. Hobson would make the most important discovery, however, a sealed tin with a single sheet of Admiralty paper with two notes written on it. The first message revealed John Franklin had died on June 11, 1847, and the second message revealed the ships had been abandoned on April 11, with the crew intending to go to Back's Great Fish River. It remains the only written record of the expedition found. The note of her husband's date of death brought peace to Lady Franklin, and Hobson received a knighthood, a promotion, and Parliament voted to award £5,000 to the crew and officers. Though other expeditions would be launched, including the discovery of the HMS Erebus in 2014 and the discovery of the HMS Terror in 2016, no major discoveries besides skeletal remains would be accomplished. The full story, or what we know of it, goes as so. After the expedition disappeared into Lancaster Sound, they were trapped in ice in the Burrow Strait. They were then again set free, to which they turned north into the Wellington Channel for about 240 kilometers, until again they were forced to retreat to Beachy Island where they spent their first winter. Here they spent the winter of 1845 to 1846. Ice finally freed them before once again trapping them in September 1846 off the coast of King William Island, where they were to stay 
as ICE failed to release them in 1847, with Franklin dying on June 11. The remaining crew members abandoned their ships on April 22, 1846, with the intent of reaching Back's Great Fish River, though many of the 105 who made the journey would die on the island with only a handful reaching the north coast of the mainland before they too fell victim to the harsh north.